everyone welcome back to my channel here on youtube so i've had this idea for a while for a video concept where i just kind of talk into a microphone while i draw um but yeah welcome to my channel welcome back if you're a regular subscriber and let's get into the video. I'm just sharpening my pencils because I was doing some doodling last night and some of my favorite colors are a bit blunt. Um, but yeah, the story I want to tell in this video today is about what interested me in industrial design, um, which was my major in university and why I studied it, what I was hoping to do with that career and how I ultimately ended up getting into um, UX design and just kind of quickly talk about that because maybe some people are interested or some people are at a point in their lives where they have to kind of consider what where they have to consider what they want to do with their lives which hang on this is getting too full I do love how pencil shavings kind of look like confetti when you throw them out. Um, but yeah, some people watching might be at a point where they're considering what they want to do as their career, etc, etc. But yeah, so I'm just going to make sure you can see my pages. Okay, before you get into the video, this is the kind of thing that I draw and something like this that's what I've been doing lately so I think that's going to be a similar vibe to what I will draw today it's using a regular blank notebook the pages are quite thick which I like and then I'm using Prismacolor pencils um, an, an assortment of pencils basically okay so let me take you back to uh, 2013. That was when I was in my final year of high school and I had to figure out what it was that I wanted to study in university. I actually um, decided that I wanted to study a double degree with industrial design and mechanical engineering. That was kind of the goal I was working towards. However, in my final year of high school, I didn't study very well. Um, I was very stressed, I was very depressed, I would say, in hindsight, and just a lot was going on. I was just so exhausted. I did a lot of sports in high school. I was just... I was just kind of dead. A few years prior to my final year in Australia, you have to do uh, one week of work experience when you're in year 10, so I was about 15. And I chose to do my work experience at a company called Oricon, which was, or still is, sorry, is an engineering company in Melbourne. And they were working on some really cool um, buildings at the time that I was doing my work experience there. I really enjoyed that experience and every day I got to kind of have a glimpse into different aspects of engineering every day. They had a really well-structured um, work experience program for year 10s and I enjoyed that experience but ultimately realized from that that I don't really want to be a civil engineer or a um, aeronautical engineer or really any kind of engineer for that matter or architect because prior to that I was tossing up between architecture and engineering and it was when I was watching an episode of Grand Designs. I saw one episode where there were some industrial designers who actually designed one of the houses. Um, I think it was 3D printed and I thought that was so cool. I was like, what the hell is industrial design? Um, and like, I want to know more about this basically. And that was kind of when I realized, you know, I can do things that involve architecture, that involve design, that involve engineering without actually having to be an engineer and do something a little bit more creative with my life. And that is kind of how I stumbled upon 
industrial design and I do feel like all of my like paths in my life kind of led to industrial design because as a child I was obsessed with IKEA furniture and their design I was obsessed with car design I had kind of a lot of obsessions through the years um, but also another thing that drew me to industrial design um, was a parent at my school one of the my classmates her father started a really cool company that I was very excited by and wanted to do something similar like that one day um, I won't talk about which company that was but I looked him up on LinkedIn and I actually found out that he also studied industrial design and he actually studied at the place where I eventually went on to study um, and I thought that was super cool so suddenly I was starting to realize this really makes sense for what I want to do with my life and I just think it's a really interesting area I also did um, it was like an industrial design I don't know what it was even like a boot camp or something as a high schooler and we got to 3d print no we didn't 3d print we had to like laser cut a chair design um, something like that and that was really cool but anyway ultimately all of these roads and decisions led me to choosing to do industrial design with my first choice as industrial design combined with MechEng, which I actually ended up not getting into. I was so devastated. Like at that time, I just couldn't believe that I didn't get in. Um, I didn't get the right marks with my final exams in year 12. Um, I had already been accepted into industrial design in industrial design as a single degree but as a double degree I didn't get in <laughs> and I was like oh my god I'm a failure I'm useless I'm a mess and I was a mess for a little while I was just so sad um, in hindsight it's like girl chill out but at the time I was like my whole world came crashing down it really wasn't a big deal and I honestly think if I really wanted to do it that badly like I would have probably studied harder but I didn't really study that hard anyway um, but yeah so I ended up just doing industrial design as a single degree at RMIT University and when I started that I was like what the hell is going on I mean if you read my newsletter or have watched my YouTube videos you will know that most of the time my default setting is like what is going on I just very I'm kind of um I don't know oblivious to a lot of things I don't know but the transition for me from high school to university was just so weird and uncomfortable and confusing like nobody cared what I was doing like nobody would really like high school really coddles you I feel like and I just didn't really have any idea where I was going. I was like, what classes do I enroll in? How do I get to my classroom? How do I join a club? Or how do I make friends in university? I don't know, guys. I was a mess. But I ended up really not enjoying my first semester that much. I thought it was kind of like not really what I was meant to be doing. Actually decided to switch from industrial design to the combined degree that I initially wanted to do, which was design and mechanical engineering so I ended up getting into that course because I had done the credits in industrial design and I was like I really didn't need to stress out so much about that when I was um, in high school but anyway so I ended up switching my major and after several weeks in that double degree studying engineering I was just like what the hell am I doing I am not an engineer I don't know what's going on I'm really bad at math I wasn't actually that bad at math um, and physics in high school but suddenly in the university classroom context where people didn't coddle you so much I was just like what the f what the hell is going on um, so then I dropped out of that I deferred for the semester and that is when I decided to start my own jewelry brand when I was in university I was 18 started my own jewelry brand making polo mcclay necklaces and selling them at markets online on instagram um anywhere i could sell them i actually sold my jewelry in a few um stores around melbourne and i did different markets 
Um, oh my gosh, this flower, where did you go? And I really enjoyed it, but like not that much. It was very stressful. But I actually just wanted to learn more about the business side of design. Um, and I would say that I learned a lot through that experience. Most importantly, I learned that I didn't want to be a jewelry maker or designer and that I wanted to like work in a company. Um, and that, yeah, as much as I love making jewelry and selling it, um, it just wasn't really what I wanted to do with my life. So I did that for a few years. I had a studio in Melbourne as well. Like basically it was just a very time consuming and expensive hobby that I occasionally made money from, but I would immediately go back and spend money on the materials I was using to make the thing. It was just very stressful, but a great learning experience. Sure. Why not? Um, but yeah, so that was 2014. Then the next year I decided to go back to university. I honestly don't remember those next few years. <laughs> um, but I do remember in 2017, that was when I started to really get into UX design in my degree. Up until that point, I had done a bit of service design, which is really what we called it then. Um, we had done human centered design, but more focus on like physical products like kitchen tools and um, even we designed like a chair at one point, uh, which was fun. We did do a bit of um, prototyping where we had to make things out of wood and learn how to use tools. Really wasn't a fan of that either. Like I, I just shouldn't be allowed near machinery. Um, but I just learned so many different skills and probably they're all useless to me now, but I, I had fun nonetheless. But in 2017, that's when I really started finding an interest in um, in UX design, service design, and more graphical interfaces rather than designing bikes and um, rock climbing equipment, which is just not really stuff that I was interested in. And I also got into a bit of interaction prototyping, which was using Arduinos and other forms of you know, like digital things to prototype things, I guess, and um, 3D printing and a lot of other things. And I just feel like I was exposed to so many things that I didn't really ever know about properly before that time, I guess, um, which I'm really grateful for. Even though I kind of almost gave up on industrial design, I just realized there was so much more to industrial design than just like um making bikes i really hate designing bikes like i i did have to do that at one point and i cried every day i failed a few of my classes at university i just really don't think i was very good at what we were doing but i think the one thing that i took away from it all was learning how to solve a problem and thinking about the people using your products basically that was probably the biggest takeaway um, when I came to Korea in 2017 to study abroad, the school that I went to also had a really big focus on UX design. That was probably the first time I took a class that actually was called UX design rather than service design. That was 20, yeah, 2017. And I just fell in love. I fell in love with like the process and um, working in a team and solving a problem together, prototyping, testing all of the different phases of UX design. Um, and thinking about that now, that experience and how much I've learned since then is just amazing to even think about because that wasn't that long ago. I mean, it was what, five years ago? Um, and that really opened up my world to a whole new range of possibilities with industrial design. Um, because like I mentioned before, like it really just hit me at some point that I didn't want to be like a typical industrial designer who designs products and furniture and lighting and all of that kind of stuff. As amazing as that all is, it's just not really... Oh no, my pencil. As you can tell by the things that I'm drawing right now, it's just not really the vibe that I go for. I also really got into making videos um, in university because we always had to film 
like user scenarios for the things that we designed and I always volunteered to make the videos and here I am still making videos five years later so that was another part I enjoyed um, but yeah anyway by the end of university I was just kind of dying to move to Korea which I did I didn't even go to my graduation I just straight away moved to Korea because you could probably tell from my channel I met my husband when I was studying abroad in Korea and yeah we did one year of long distance and then I came here right away after graduating and I got into English teaching because when I was in my final year at university I was also doing online teaching one-on-one -on -one to um, some young students in China we were using zoom that was back in 2018 when there was no pandemic and zoom teaching was actually kind of maybe quite rare at that time I'm not sure <laughs> um, but that was so much fun I really enjoyed that as my part-time job and I actually got to meet my students in person because they traveled to Melbourne um, and I also did my thesis in my industrial design thesis on um, second language acquisition and using Google Home technology to gain second language skills. So I was just super interested in language, culture, technology, and now that I'm in Korea, it's kind of cool that I'm still working in that field. I work in an education company, um, but I've skipped ahead. So I worked as a teacher for 10 months. I absolutely hated it. Um, and then my first job as a designer in Korea was as an interior designer of all things. I was a useless interior designer, but I also got to do a bit of UX design in that job. I did some web design. Um, I got to do some branding design. I did also do some interior design, which was super weird. I did some styling, like interior styling. I did some uh, 3D rendering of like interiors super crazy experience but i'm so grateful for that experience because i did just get to learn the culture of korean workplaces um albeit that was a very different experience because the company was a little bit old school i would say so it wasn't probably the best um example of what a korean company was like um, but that was in 2020 and then suddenly I got um, I got a job at a technology company and I was just like, you know what, I've just got to make the switch now into tech um, because if I stay in interiors for too long, it's kind of just going to be my, my domain and I don't really enjoy interior design that much as, as much as I love it, like as a hobby and like scrolling through Pinterest and looking for um, pretty things to save to my Pinterest board. It's just not really what I wanted to do as a job. Um, so I took that opportunity in the tech company and that was actually like a metaverse startup, I would say. Um, that was also a great experience. That was more of the traditional startup kind of vibe that um, is very hot in Korea now and at that time as well. Um, and then ultimately that landed me my next job, I guess, um, because of that experience. Um, but yeah, now I'm working as a UX designer in a education startup in Korea. And I initially joined the company as a product manager because they were kind of short on product staff. I had never really thought too much about what product is, I'm um, sorry, what product management was. I didn't really know too much about it because my previous companies didn't have product managers, but in hindsight, they did have product managers. They just weren't called product managers and we weren't using the agile scrum methodologies. What else can I draw? I'm running out of ideas. Um, but yeah, I worked as a product manager for about eight, six, seven months, maybe. Um, and then I joined, there was an opportunity to join the UX design team. 
because I was already kind of doing a bit of UX stuff on as in my role as a product manager, which I did enjoy. And having done that now, I definitely think that my future does, um, oops, that my future might involve more product management um, because it is interesting. I'm, I don't know, I just kind of need to study a bit more, get some qualifications and more experience in that field. But it could be something that I do want to pursue later down the track. But yeah, like I said, I really would want to get more experience and a bit more qualification up my sleeve before I dive into another product role. Um, oops. Um, but yeah, now that I'm working on the UX team again, a UX team again, I'm really enjoying the processes and I do think that not just UX design, but any form of design is really just um, puzzle solving, I guess, and solving problems and challenges that need creative and fast and um, interesting solutions, I guess. And I think um, these experiences working in companies has also helped me a lot in my own personal projects about how I manage my time, about how I approach my thinking about the whole thing, I guess. Um, you know, you don't have to have the right answer for something or the right idea for something right away. It can take a few goes. Um, when I started posting YouTube videos, I didn't really know what I was doing, but it took a while. I still don't know what I'm doing, but yeah, I don't really know if that makes sense. <laughs> but anyway, that's kind of um, my journey in UX design and the kind of thought process behind my experience um, and the decisions I made in my career. But ultimately, I don't think you can really make a bad decision if you're just kind of following what you feel is right in your own career. Um, something I also wanted to do was study my masters, but I just couldn't really figure out what I wanted to specialize in. And I felt like I was just wanting to study my masters for the sake of it. Um, and now that I'm I don't know, I just don't really feel like I need to do that right now. Maybe one day later on down the track, I might want to consider doing my master's, but for right now, I'm just enjoying taking the opportunities that I find along the way. And who knows where I'll be in five years from now, because honestly, given my track record, like, I could be an interior designer, I could be anything, I could be a CEO of my own company, I could be, <laughs> who knows, I could be a successful illustrator, like, I just don't know. Um, but I do think that working in companies has motivated me more to pursue my own hobbies um, and just make sure I'm still creating and solving problems for myself rather than for other companies because that's what I like to do you know and I feel like much like reading a book that you really love for your English class kind of can ruin it it's the same thing for following your passions and your curiosities it can kind of feel like a chore to have to to do your hobby or your passion as a job for other people. I think it's different if you're doing it and you're self-employed, but I don't know, maybe I've got it all wrong. Maybe I'm not thinking about it in the right way. I haven't drawn a bird yet, oh my gosh. Where am I gonna fit the bird? Maybe here? Um, but yeah, I definitely I don't think I ever thought I would be here. 
where I am now. But I think that's the fun part. Like, you can't really plan or predict where you're going to end up. I'm going to put its beak into this orange. You can't really plan for it. You just have to figure it out as you go. Um, I don't know. But I guess people already know that, don't they? But, yeah. I guess I probably thought that I would be more successful at this point in my life. But I think in some ways I already am successful because I get to just do what I'm good at for my job in a country that I love and be with the person that I love, my husband, in the same soil. <laughs> and I have lots of amazing hobbies that I really enjoy and feel fulfilled from. So depending on how you measure success, then I would say that's pretty good. But I definitely have a lot of goals and ambitions um, for my future in Korea and my life here. So, not to be cheesy, but this story is kind of just the beginning, right? Like, it's such a quick snapshot into my experiences up until this point, but um, it's, it's only going to go up from here, right? <laughs> yeah, this bird is like looking a bit sad. Maybe his beak is like... No. Um, needs a tail, needs a tail. Maybe I will never post this video ever, but I don't know. A lot of people ask me about getting work in Korea, how it is, how hard it is, what you need in order to do it. And I was looking at my LinkedIn um, the other day and I have applied for 222 jobs in Korea um, and that's just on LinkedIn like I've applied for a lot of jobs via email as well and on other job platforms and considering that the two jobs that I've had like good jobs in startups came from LinkedIn the fact that I was rejected from 220 other jobs to get them is just kind of an idea of how much work has gone into this journey. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to make people feel discouraged, but I do see a lot of um, YouTube videos on YouTube. <laughs> That's where YouTube videos live, on YouTube of people saying it's really hard to be a foreigner in Korea, which yeah it is, because if you don't want to work in the kindergarten then your alternative is to apply for 220 jobs on LinkedIn <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense but it is really difficult and um, very rewarding at the same time I think but if you're not getting rejected on a daily basis to achieve what you want to achieve then maybe it isn't the right place for you because I don't know is that too harsh I don't want to sound harsh I don't know but yeah it is possible it's just what are you willing to sacrifice in my case I've definitely sacrificed friendship like I don't have many friends in Korea um, and I've definitely burned a lot of friendship bridges because I've just been so focused on my career hopefully one day it will all make sense to people why I've done that <laughs> but if it doesn't make sense right now then that's okay like I just have to live with with the consequences but you know maybe that's not a good excuse I dropped a pencil
Okay, so that is the finished doodle. Um, I really hate this bird, so let's just let's just get him out of the way. No, it's totally fine. Um, thank you so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed this video, or if you even made it to the end of the video, thank you so much for watching. Um, I might continue to make these videos. Um even if no one watches them because they're kind of cathartic for me and I do this anyway um, all the time so may as well um, kill two birds not this bird don't listen to me kill two birds with one acorn and upload them onto my channel um, but yeah that's that's it for me so check out some of my other videos if you're interested in um what i get up to in korea and if you like listening to my words you can also subscribe to my oops that's too close you can also subscribe to my weekly podcast nope you can also subscribe to my weekly newsletter on substack um which i Oops, which I post every Sunday, sometimes Monday morning. Um, but yeah, I will see you in my next video. Bye.